Yo guys, what's going on? Today, I'm gonna show you guys the basics of CSGO. I'm basically gonna show you guys how to play CSGO from the very, very beginning. Now, I'm making a video like this. In fact, I'm making a two video series like this because I've had a lot of people ask me what they need to know to get into CSGO and how to start playing, along with how to improve their skills a little bit. So basically, I'm gonna make, for those people, a two video series. Part one is this video, and part two will be another video coming out within the next week or so about how to play CSGO, like from the very basics, but then and also how you can play the game good so you can be like a decent player rank up fast know the game well and not constantly lose because you don't know what you're doing and uh yeah that's pretty much what this is going to be so like i said this video is going to be the very basics and just so you guys know i have timestamps for all the more specific things down in the description so if you guys are looking for one specific thing go ahead and check that out other than that let's get started so the first thing we're going to start off with is assuming that you've already downloaded csgo and clicked play through steam i'm going to show you the home screen the home screen of csgo this is the first thing you're going to see when you open up the game and granted yours is going to be a lot more simple than mine you're probably not going to have friends on your friends list you're not going to have a rank and your level is not going to be level 15 like mine is right now you're also not going to have all these badges i do just want to point that out so on a brand new account your home screen is going to look very basic there's not going to be anything on it but this is what you're going to need to know for the home screen this is basically what everything does if you come over to the left you have the csgo which basically if you click on this it would take you back to the dashboard which is what we're already on right now then you have play csgo if you click this this is where you can start a game this is where all your different game modes are i'll go into this in a second the button below it looking to play this is for people who might not want to solo queue might not want to play by themselves and here you can find people who are looking for other players to play with them whether you know them or not coming down to the icon below it this is your inventory if you click this this is going to be your inventory this is where all of your csgo items are going to be now again this is my inventory i have actually a lot of items in here and like i said you guys are going to be starting off with an inventory basically looking like something like this where you have all of your basic csgo weapons in game with no skins this is basically what yours is probably going to look like something like this like i said once you start buying skins if you're getting skin drops also from in game this is where they're going to start to show up now the icon below that your inventory is your watch matches and tournaments now basically this is kind of a useless thing unless you want to go back and see the demos for different majors that have happened but what's most important is you can see your matches you can see your wins and your losses you can actually see the most eight recent matches you've played so of course like i said i haven't been playing very good lately so i have a lot of red on here but you can see i've got my most recent eight matches and what's also cool about this is for the four most recent you can go down here and click down Download. If you wanted to see this match over again, or even just view the demo, which means you get to see everything that happened in the game from all perspectives, you can do that from in here. Now you also have live streams, events, some more information up here. This is more for professional stuff, or if you just want to see other matches, you can see I can also go and spectate some other matches that are happening right now from various different ranks. Again, if you guys are wondering what these rank symbols are, I will be explaining that here in a second. Now coming down to the next icon here, you're gonna see that I have something that most of you guys are not gonna have and that is Overwatch. You guys don't need to worry about this. This is going to come later after you've spent a lot more time in CSGO if you can get up to where I am. Again, don't worry about this. This doesn't matter. You don't need to worry about it. Coming down below that, you should just have your settings menu. Now, if you click this, this is where all of your in-game settings are. You have your video settings, your audio settings, game, mouse and keyboard, and controller settings if you're also playing a controller. You can play this game with the controller too if you don't know. And uh, below that, then you have quit to desktop. That is basically all of the buttons here on this left side. And like I said, the CSGO button at the top, if you click this, it takes you back to your home screen. So here we are back on the home screen. Those are all the icons on the left that you have to worry about. Those are all important. You will use those all at one point or another. Next, we're kind of coming over here to this middle area. Um, and this is where all your news, all your updates, anything that happens with the game is going to show up. So you guys can see the most recent update we had was when they added in some of the music kits and some other bug fixes. If you wanted to find out more information about those updates, they're all going to be right here. Um, it also gives you guys updates on some of the new majors that are coming out. As you guys can see down here, there are two. And then at the very bottom, you have coupons, which really they aren't coupons they're just items you can buy on the market same thing here with store and market these are kind of just shortcuts to if you were going to buy cases you can go ahead and say click on the prisma 2 case and it would take you to this community market where you can then buy it 
Same thing here, store, it's another shortcut for some stuff people will sometimes use. Again, if you're brand new to the game, you don't really need to worry about name tags, stat track, swap tools, and storage units. That will come later as you spend more time in CSGO. Now coming over here to the right, if you guys hover your mouse over this, you'll see it'll expand. And this is basically where you're gonna see your profile, your accomplishments, your friends, and some other information. So starting off at the very top, you can see I have my profile photo and my name, but I also have all the badges I've earned in game. Um, I will explain the badges here more in a second, but coming down below that, then we have your rank. Again, rank, I will explain that more in a second because a lot of these things require a lot more detail. You have your rank, which most of you should not have yet. If you click on this, it should say uh, skill group hidden for all three of these. You have your competitive skill group, you have your wingman skill group, and you have your danger zone skill group. Three different game modes. These are the only ranked game modes in CSGO, and those three ranks are going to show up here. Now coming down below this, this is where your friends list is going to be, it's also where a couple other important things are going to be. So you can see right here this little person icon, this is where all of my friends are. All of my friends that are online and that have the game are showing up right here. Uh, if you guys were to play with a friend, all you got to do is click on them and invite to friend to play, which is at the very top, it's a little envelope right here. Now coming over the next icon, again this is looking to play, just like the other tab I was showing you guys below the play button, you're going to see a bunch of different lobbies people are waiting to play in right now. And they're not necessarily looking for players, they're just lobbies that the game is saying, hey, you might want to join this if you guys want to not solo queue. And as you guys can see, it gives various lobbies with different ranks you guys can play. And it also gives location of each of these people and the servers that they would be playing on. So pretty simple here, your USA flag is going to be American servers, the Mexican flag is going to be Mexican servers, Canada servers for the Canada flag, and so on and so forth. Now you'll coming up here, you'll see that there also are three different symbols, and those symbols are for the three ranks game modes you can play. So we're on competitive right now. This is is the only one you'll probably ever use but then they also have wingman as you can see they're reloading in right now and danger zone which is not very useful at all and if for some reason you guys had csgo just open and sitting this little circle button here is the refresh so you can get new matches if you don't like the ones you're seeing and as you can see mine just updated now coming over to the next tab up here is your recent teammates tab if you've been playing any of the csgo ranked matches you'll see your recent teammates show up here this is most useful for your recent comp matches if you wanted to play with someone you just played with who was really good here is where you could invite them to play again and the last icon over here is friend requests this is very important when you're just starting out the envelope icon on this bar up here is your friend request tab if you have incoming friend requests they will show up right here super easy you can just click on them and add that person say you're playing with a friend they sent you a friend request you would add it right here if you want to add someone through the game and not through steam which really doesn't matter, it's up to you how you want to add a friend. You can also come in game and click this add friend icon and it's going to bring up this window and every CSGO player, every Steam account with CSGO downloaded basically is going to have a specific friend code. So what you can do here is you can see my friend code is this code right here and if I copy this you could then put it in a discord for someone else to use to add. And basically if you have that code you would copy and paste it right here into this box and click the check mark and that person's profile, only that person's profile file with the exact code will show up so you don't have to go searching like you might have to do on Steam. Super easy, super convenient. I actually use this all the time for friends that I play with if we're playing an alt account. It's an easy way just to add that alt account here so I can join their lobby or they can join my lobby super easily. But basically guys, that is it for the home screen. These are all the important buttons you need to know on the home screen. So the next thing I want to do is explain these levels. So as you guys saw up here, we passed the levels. I'm currently level 15. Now CSGO levels are very simple but are very kind of interesting. Your level does not depend on how good you are, your level just goes up every time you complete a match. And basically every single game you play will give you some amount of XP, some game modes will be greater than others, some will be less, but your XP really doesn't matter too much. Like I said, it does not measure how good you are, it just measures how much you've played the game. Now with CSGO levels, it's a little different than most games. CSGO measures your levels between 1 and 40, meaning you can go levels 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 40. And when you get to 40, it resets back to 1. And that is where you can see these badges up here come into play. If I go into my inventory, which is where these badges come up, you can see I got my first 40 levels 
back in 2017 right here. If I click on this and inspect it, you guys can see back in 2017, if you got from levels one to 40 once throughout that entire year, you would get this badge. And basically this means you can display this item. As you see right here, I can display this item. And that means it would show up, up here above your username or above your profile photo, which is kind of cool. So very simple. That's basically how levels work. Every time you go from one to 40, you get a badge for the year that you're playing. For instance, you would get the 2020 badge if you were to level one to 40 in 2020 and if you guys were to do it more than once meaning you got 80 levels maybe 120 levels all in 2020 you could also upgrade your pin you can upgrade your pin basically it wouldn't give you multiple 2020 service medals it would upgrade it and as you guys can see here 2019 i've got the green pin basically it was upgraded twice and i got the 2017 pin was upgraded once meaning i got to level 80 in 2017 and i got another 120 levels in 2019 i believe that what is what green i could be i could be wrong on that i'm not sure but as you guys can see my 20 20 service medal i haven't gotten to upgrade it yet i just got that actually not super long ago i'm at level 15 now so i've gone up about 55 levels in 2020 already and as soon as i hit 80 then this will upgrade i believe to the color blue i think blue is the first one but that's basically how levels in the pins work i do want to note on that topic though that besides the yearly pin you can get for leveling 1 through 40 there are other pins you can get as you guys can see i have two other coins over here these two coins right here the operation hydra coin and the operation shattered web coin these are earned every time csgo releases an operation and basically you you get this right away as soon as the operation releases you get this pin in your inventory saying oh you played CSGO during the time Operation Hydra for example was active so now I have this coin and you'll notice that both of these coins are not bronze coins they're actually silver coins and that is because every time you complete a certain amount of tasks for each of these operations you will level up that coin just like you can level up your service medals you'll level up those coins and they will change colors every time you do i believe it goes bronze silver gold platinum and diamond or something like that i don't know exactly again just another cool thing with the badges coins and levels i just wanted to mention so do keep that in mind that is why these two are different and yeah and now that brings me to another quick topic and that is operations. Now, every so often, and I can't give an exact time estimate because CSGO does change when they release these into the game. Every so often, there will be an operation active in the game. We just had Operation Shattered Web, as you saw my pin in my inventory, for example. And these operations basically release new special items into the game, but also challenges. They're almost kind of like a battle pass in a way from other games, as for example, Fortnite. They're almost like that Fortnite battle pass where you're doing things, you're, you're doing things in game, you're doing challenges in game to gain points, which will eventually redeem for rewards. And those rewards are normally brand new introduced into the game just specifically for that operation. They're super fun to play. Like I said, they don't come out super often and they only last for a couple of months. Like I said, we just had Operation Shattered Web. And if you guys want to see what that is, there are other videos on YouTube you can check out for that. I can't necessarily showcase it in this video right here, but it's super cool when CSGO does release new operations. It means new weapons, new skins, super cool super fun new sometimes even new game modes they release new game modes sometimes with those but yeah that's pretty much it for operations i did just want to mention that because that is important to have in the beginning tutorial here and uh yeah let's move on to the next thing so this next topic is very important you're going to actually notice if you come back to your home screen something up here above the news tab saying i believe it's above the news tab either above the news tab or down below below it you're going to have something saying buy prime Again, if you also come into your Play CSGO, you're gonna see that this, where it says Prime Enabled for me, is gonna say Non-Prime for you. Now, CSGO is free to play. You guys downloaded CSGO, you know it's free to play. Prime is basically the paid version of CSGO. And while you don't need it to play the game, Prime will give you certain special abilities in the game that you wouldn't normally have. It basically is like two different big all around game modes for CSGO. You're gonna have access to all the game modes, but you're gonna be put with people who are not only brand new to the game, but also you're gonna be risking very heavy smurfs, meaning people who are very high level in the game coming down to lower levels, be able just to mess around and completely destroy brand new players. Or you're gonna be put with hackers because Prime not having Prime means you don't have to pay for the game, which also also brings the possibility of new hackers because they can just play the game for free, make a new account, hack for a little while, get banned, and they don't lose anything. Now, if you do buy Prime, it is $15 at the time I'm making this video and it is very important to have because it allows you to play with more advanced players. Now there are a couple things it does bring like Prime Enabled gives you Prime service only. Like I said you get more advanced players but you also don't have to worry about hackers as much. 
Now, I can't guarantee you that there will never be any hackers, but every once in a while you will encounter minor hacks someone's playing with, which they will eventually get banned for, but most of the time as it goes, that won't happen in the middle of your game you're playing. Now, I had to mention Prime before I go into all the game modes, because it is super important to note that when you are playing CSGO free, you will not have non-Prime. You're most likely not going to be put with good players, but it is a great place to start out because most of the players are not going to have great aim and they'll be super easy to learn the guns in the game with. Now I do have to add this on quickly. When you do buy Prime, as you can see, I don't have a description here, but if you hover over yours that says non-Prime, you'll see what you can get when you buy Prime. And a quick, very simple conclusion of it is basically not only will you get put with better players and not have to risk hackers as much, but you will also have the ability to get drops in game that are better than the normal drops you would get with non-Prime. And basically every time you level up one to two, for example, you get a drop in game. And instead of getting something super, super, super stupid and cheap, you can have the option to get something a lot better and potentially even more expensive, which is kind of cool to add on. All right, so now that you guys know some of the basics of how CSGO works and what you're gonna be working towards, now we're gonna start to move into what you need to do before you start playing. And one of the first very important things you do need to do, and you'll also need to do this for every other game, you've probably done it before if you've played any other game, is you need to go into your settings and make sure you have all of your stuff set the way you want it. The most important thing to do before anything else is to go into your video settings and adjust all of your different settings to what works best for your computer. For CSGO, these settings are gonna be under advanced video. And basically here you can adjust the quality of your global shadow quality, models, effects, shaders. You can choose multi-core rendering, motion blur, stuff like that, for example. As you can see, all of mine are almost set to the max here and that's because I'm on a very good computer. But for example, if you're playing on a laptop or maybe a budget PC, you're gonna to wanna to set some of these to maybe medium or even low to help make your playing experience a little bit smoother. One thing to note is that if you do set your settings to low, there actually is not a major difference. You're not gonna get like a super crappy looking game. Actually, it doesn't really make a massive difference, but it will make some of the textures look a little bit worse. Now, keep in mind when you do set these settings, you're just setting them right now so that you know when you go into a game for the first time, you're not gonna have the game crashing or you're not gonna have stuttering or something like that. This is why you wanna make sure your settings are set to where your computer can handle them first. First. Once you have that done, again, keep in mind, you don't have to keep them all set permanently to where you have them right now. You can change them later on if you need, but once that's done, you're also gonna wanna come up here and just consider changing some of the settings to your personal preference for the audio, game, keyboard, and keyboard and mouse settings. Under audio, you would adjust all your settings. This is also where you adjust what mic input the game is using. And if you guys don't know, yes, you can talk to players in game, but you have to set your microphone accordingly. So you can see my audio device is set to my Corsair Void headset and I have voice enabled. I believe this is turned off when you first download the game. You need to make sure you turn this on. Press to use mic is what I have mine on and actually that is the only option for it. So make sure that you're set to that. And again, if you wanna adjust any of the volume settings or any of the music settings for the volume, they're all down here. Coming into your game settings, a lot of these are personal preference, but if you wanna copy some of my settings, I'll leave this up on screen for a little bit. Basically, this is gonna adjust how CSGO puts you into matchmaking varying by ping, but it's also gonna give you the option to change your, the look of your HUD and some other features that are actually really cool. So here you can see that I can change the look, the color, the position, the size of my HUD in game, which is super nice to have. You can also see that here I can adjust a lot of other things. A lot of this gets more really in depth to the game. You don't have to worry about a lot of this. In fact, a lot of it you can just leave the way it is already. But the one thing that is really important to look at is your crosshair. And if you either click up here or you scroll down a little bit, you're gonna see that you can set a custom crosshair in game. Now, now a lot of you guys are probably gonna already have a crosshair that you like, but if you wanna recreate it or even make a new one, you can experiment with these different sliders and you guys can see on screen, you see my little red one. That's the one I've been using. But again, play around with it and find one you like. Next, moving up to keyboard and mouse, this is where your mouse sensitivity and zoom sensitivity are gonna be. Now, as you can see, I don't know exactly what DPI I'm playing on right now, but I have my sensitivity at 1.9 and I have my zoom sensitivity on one. Again, a lot of this is personal preference. If you want some of these settings a certain way, you're gonna adjust them here. Also, what's very important is this is where you can set keybinds for every single key you would need to use in game. As you can see, you have your WSAD, your basic movement keys and shift, walk, jump, stuff like that. But coming down a little farther, you can also see that you also have all of the keybinds custom to CSGO itself. 
Again, if you want to change these, go ahead and change them right now. If you scroll down a little bit under communications options, you're going to see use mic. Now I have mine set to mouse three. That's basically when I press down my mouse wheel on my mouse. And every time I do that, it allows me to talk in game. Make sure you guys set this for whatever is most comfortable for you. I forget what it is by default, but it's very important that you guys set this if you want to be talking to other players in game. Other than that, this is basically all you have to worry about for the settings. Like I said, setting your video settings ahead of time are the most important. And uh, that's basically it. Once you're done there, go ahead and click back to the home screen. So now that your settings are all done, we're going to talk about CSGO ranks real fast. As you can see over here, my rank is Gold Nova 2. And I'm going to put up on screen real fast all the ranks in CSGO. But basically, there's a massive list of ranks in CSGO. These ranks in CSGO basically determine how good you are at the game. They basically state how good of a player you are. Like I said before, if you hover over where your ranks would be on your home screen, you're going to see that there's nothing there. It's going to say undetermined. It's going to say not available something like that you will not get your rank for example for competitive or for wingman until you win your first 10 matches you have to play 10 matches but not just play 10 matches you have to win 10 so it could be 20 matches it could be 30 matches depending on how good or how bad you are you have to win at least 10 matches to get your rank now as you see on screen there are a lot of different ranks Silver is probably where most of you guys are going to get placed unless you're an exceptionally good player. Rankings basically depended on how many games you win, how good your aim is, and also a couple other minor factors that the CSGO ranking algorithms are looking for. If you guys want to hear more details on that, I'll have linked in the description a video explaining the ranking system and also how to rank up quickly. Other than that, the ranking system is pretty simple. This is just good to keep in mind so you know where you are. Basically, Silver is very beginner, Golden Over is intermediate, and anything above that is actually pretty good. As you guys can see here by my rank i'm not the best player i was gold nova 3 a couple days ago but then you know i lost a couple of games so rip gold nova 3 but also like i said a lot of you guys are going to be starting in silver and don't worry about it silver is going to put you with easier players players that aren't as good as for example high silver or gold nova players and they're good to work with and play with as you're learning the game understanding your spray patterns understanding how everything works and just getting to know csgo all right so now that you know how the home screen works you know how your ranking system works you know how to level up and you have all all of your settings set now we can finally get into how to play the game now most of you guys probably will already know this but if you don't a quick description of csgo is it is a counter terrorist versus terrorist kind of game you have two teams on most of the maps you're going to play you have counter terrorists and you have terrorists the terrorists are going to be trying to plant a bomb or to defend hostages they've captured and the counter terrorists are going to either be trying to defuse that bomb or rescue the hostage and now that's probably a little bit confusing there are two different game modes i'm going to get more into that in a second but the main game mode you guys are going to be playing is called defusal and that is where the counter terrorists are trying to defuse the bomb the terrorists are trying to plant now like i said there are two different types of maps and to be honest you aren't really going to have to worry about the second type of map but the first map you're going to be playing almost all the time like i said is called defusal Defusal is where the counter terrorists are trying to defuse the bomb that the terrorists planted. Those are going to be maps like Mirage, Inferno, Overpass, Vertigo, Nuke, Train, and so on. But maps like Agency and Office are going to be hostage maps. Basically meaning the counter terrorists, instead of defusing the terrorist bomb, are going to be trying to rescue the hostage and bring it back to the safe zone, which is aka the spawn point of the counter terrorists. Basically, that is a quick summary of how CSGO works. That is what you're going to be doing when you start playing the game. But this is where it's going to start getting a little bit confusing because there are some game modes where that is not the objective, but it's pretty easy to get down once you understand it. And hopefully that's what I'm going to help with here. So now moving on to the different game modes in CSGO that you can play and knowing the general description of how to play CSGO, I'm going to show you that now. So basically, you're going to come over to the play button again, the play CSGO, and you're going to click this. The first thing you're going to see is this drop down menu right here, the official matchmaking. You're going to be on this already don't worry about switching it this is the one you want to be on to play official csgo servers and here you're going to notice there are six tabs under official matchmaking competitive wingman casual deathmatch war games and danger zone these are the six main game modes you have the option to play competitive and wingman are both ranked game modes now a quick description of both of these is competitive is going to be five players versus five players so 10 players in total best out of 16 matches whoever gets the 16 first wins whether it be the counter terrorists or the terrorists you have the option to queue for all of these maps here and say you wanted to play office agency train and dust 2 you would select these maps make sure the rest are unselected and click go and that would start your search for a game with those specific maps now you have the option to play all 11 of these maps here as you can see i'm kind of scrolling through the page you can see them but then you also have scrimmage 
scrimmage maps, and scrimmage maps right now are only Mirage and Chlorine. Keep in mind, both competitive maps and scrimmage maps will change from time to time, but scrimmage maps are basically competitive maps, again, five players versus five players you can play that won't affect your rank whether you win or lose. Basically, a practice competitive game mode. Wingman is a two player versus two player, so four players in total version of competitive but also with smaller and different maps. So as you guys can see, some of the maps are the same, but some of them are different. And when you do play this game mode, you're gonna notice that the maps are a lot smaller and a lot more confined because it's only two players versus two players. This game mode is also best out of nine rounds. It's not as long as competitive, but it is still ranked. Again, this is a ranked game mode. You do get a ranked on this based on your win-loss ratio along with a couple other things, but it's more simple and a quicker competitive game to play. Casual along with these next couple of game modes here I'm gonna show you are not ranked ranked, but are a lot of fun to play if you're just playing for fun or you're just trying to warm up or if you're just trying to get a little bit of practice in, for example. Casual can basically be eight players versus eight players at a full lobby, so 16 players in a full lobby, but it also can be anything below that. It's a lot more just random. The map pools rotate for every game unless you're playing specifically Dust 2, and it's a lot of fun just to play with a lot more players, but to also just get some practice in or just to mess around for fun if you want to use a specific gun and just mess around and try to troll people with it. Again, this is also either defusal or hostage group maps, meaning you're either trying to defuse the bomb slash plant the bomb, or you're trying to defend the hostage slash rescue the hostage. This is the last normal game mode based on the competitive and wingman game modes. Moving on to deathmatch, deathmatch, while it is the same map, same sized maps and everything, deathmatch is going to be very different. Deathmatch is a max of 16 players, just like casual, but each player is going to be trying to kill as many of the enemy team as you can. It's a constant respawn, you don't have to wait to respawn unlike the other game modes, and you're just trying to kill as many people as you can, either random weapons or a specific weapon of your choice. Every time you kill an opposing player, you basically get a certain amount of points, and whoever has the most points at the very end of the 10 minutes wins. And yes, I forgot to say it, the game modes here are also 10 minutes long, like I said, Whoever has the most points in 10 minutes wins. Moving on to War Games, War Games is more of a category of games you can play, which includes Flying Scoutsman, Demolition, and Arms Race. Basically, all three of these are kind of practice maps. I call them practice maps because a lot of people don't play on them anymore, and there's a lot of bots in these game modes. Sometimes you can find full lobbies, but I'm not going to take the time to explain them right now. If you guys want to play these, I would just go and mess around with them. They're kind of cool. Flying Scoutsman, as you can guess, is only the scout, but with decreased gravity on the map, meaning you can kind of fly around, and your accuracy is really increased. So that's a fun one just to mess around with. Arms Race, you're getting two kills with every weapon. Whoever gets so the knife first to get a knife kill wins. And Demolition is using one specific gun every round and that gun changes every time you get a kill. Those are the basic description of the three and uh, yeah let's move on to Danger Zone. Now Danger Zone is definitely more of a newer game mode. I haven't played it a lot, I've only got one win on it, but basically it is like Battle Royale. It is Battle Royale, but instead of it being 100 players in total, you only have 16 players in total. Every time you play this, it's 16 players in total, last person standing wins, you can play with a team, you can play without a team. It's up to you how you would want to play that. I believe most of the time though, you're always going to be put with one other person as a team. So there's more of eight teams, 16 players in total. It's a bit different than other battle royales. So I'm going to say if you guys do want to play it, I'd go check it out for yourself. It's going to take me a really, really long time to explain this one because it is a lot different and introduces a lot of cool things. But the basis of it is you're finding crates, you're opening crates to hopefully find weapons. Whoever gets the most kills and eliminates everyone else basically wins the game and that is basically all the game modes and holy crap this is gonna be a long ass video but that's why i'm splitting it up into two parts but basically going back to the home screen that is everything you need to know before you start playing csgo and after you're done watching this video if you don't want to watch part two yet or if part two isn't out go ahead and play some of the practice game modes for yourself go ahead and go into a game of casual and just mess around with the game and see how everything works again part two will be coming out soon i will show you guys specifically how everything works in game and what you need to know for that so make sure you guys stay tuned and subscribe with notifications on for that and i'll see you guys all then peace